and his blessings in your life. And I also pray that you will have the opportunity to share your faith today and in the coming week with someone in need of God's love and compassion. I wish to focus on just a few words in the gospel passage that also connects to the epistle. And he sat down and taught the people from the boat, and when he had ceased speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. And Simon answered, Master, we toiled all night and took nothing, but at your word I will let down the nets. At your word. <coughs> we go to the book of Genesis, we read the beginning of creation, and we read that there is a void. The earth is a void, and there is emptiness and there is chaos. And then the Lord speaks, let there be light. And there is light. And see, he sees that it is good, and then the rest of creation takes place. The word of God is very powerful. Even one word from God moves and creates and brings life. In the Gospel of St. John, we hear, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Throughout the New Testament, we hear about this Word. We hear also from the centurion who says to the Lord when he is seeking healing for his servant, simply say the Word. Simply say the Word and he will be healed. The Lord says, great faith you have. Greater faith I have not seen in all of Israel. The centurion answer, understands this because he is in charge of many. And perhaps we can understand what the word really means because when we are in charge of something, we simply wish to say, let it be done. Do this, go there, take care of this. And hopefully it happens, depending on who's following us, depending on who we are in charge of. CEOs of great companies simply say something and it gets done. We have a very good example of that with the company Apple. And when jo Steve Jobs was alive, he simply wanted to do certain things. He said, do this, and it happened. A teacher in a classroom says, I want you to do this, this, and this, and we as students do it. If we don't, either we fail, or we're sent to detention, or we have to go to the principal's office. Is that the way it happens? Still, that's what I thought. The word, very important, the word. We speak words. I am speaking to you now in words. Hopefully, you can hear me as even those in the back standing there. Words are very important to communicate. We can communicate in other ways. We can communicate with our hands. We can communicate with our face. We can communicate with our bodies. But the most effective communication is through the word. Why does St. John say in the beginning was the word? Because it was in the beginning. Let there be light. The Word of God is also very important to the saints of the church. They understood how powerful the Word of God is. At your word, they changed their life. At their word, at your word, Lord, I will stop what I'm doing and follow you. At your word, I will give up everything I have, give it to the poor, and follow you. At your word, I will spend my time in prayer. I will feed the poor. I will build monasteries and churches. 
I will reach out to the people of God and bring them to you at your word. This is what we read in both the Old and the New Testament. The prophets of the Old Testament knew this very well, and we read their word prayerfully, looking for that inspiration. We remember one of them today, Baruch. He was an assistant to the prophet Jeremiah, and yet he also is considered a prophet. He wrote a book, five chapters. And in those chapters, we also hear of God's revelation. Baruch speaks, and his writing is read to us, the eve of the nativity, the eve of Christmas, the coming of the Messiah, the incarnation. At your word, at your word. We give our word when we make a promise. Do we not? It is like a contract. I give my word that I will do this. And we consider that to be as strong as a signed contract with our signature. It was at one point in time in history where the word was the only thing that would need to be given to accomplish a task. The emperors of time past simply said something, and it was done. The emperor Constantine said and gave to his mother, this is, I will give you all of this gold, and you will go to the land of Galilee and the Palestine, and you will look for those churches, those places where Christ was crucified and buried and rose, and you will build churches there. And his faithful mother took that treasure and went to the Holy Lands and built many of those churches that still mark the spots today where our Lord walked and talked and gave his word and created, created faith, created a faith that is powerful even unto today. It is his word that we embrace. It is his word that we seek to follow. This is what we read every week in the scriptures, the word of God. I pray that the word of God speaks to all of you, each of you, and motivates you. If it does not, then you are doing something to keep the word from being fruitful in your life. You are blocking the word of God. You are blocking the Holy Spirit to work in your life. You are listening to it, but you are not embracing it. You are not taking it import as important as other words. Perhaps your word is louder than the word of God. Perhaps your word is one that you are listening to more than the word of God. Perhaps the word of others is more important to you than others, than the word of God. Perhaps the influence of others in your life has become more important than God's influence. In the epistle reading, we read the following. We are treated as impostors, and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. St. Paul writes this to the Corinthians, St. Paul understands the Word of God. St. Paul thought he knew the Word of God until on the road to Damascus he is confronted by the Word and he realizes that he knows nothing, that he has misunderstood the Word, that he has misused the Word, that he has distorted the Word. And he spends the rest of his life correcting, correcting his mistakes. He offers us a great example of how to live according to the Word. All of the saints offer us that. That is why we put images of the saints on the walls of churches. That is why you have images of the saints in your home. Because their life, their example, their Word, the Word that they have been given by God and spoken to us, is powerful also whether it be say, the prophet Baruch, or today the confessor, 
Caritun, or as I just visited in June, the monastery of St. Neophytos, who we also commemorate today, each of these men lived according to the word of God. Their lives were changed. They were transfigured. And the word of God was manifested in them and in all that they did and all that they said. Let it be so for us as well. May the word of God, at your word, Lord, I will live and change my life because you have said so. My life will become an example of a new creation, transfigured, transformed, remade to serve you.